Well, I've heard the pump topping off with uh, premium. About to head underway to a uh, trip with my buddies to Ponca City. And uh, I'm pretty excited. Let's see what happens. Now yeah, we just made a quick stop at the Culver's back here and grabbed some lunch. Bentonville. We're about to get on the road. Head up north uh, I-49. Cut over on uh, 60. Take that on over to Ponca City and have one heck of a show tonight, I think. Stay tuned. All right, we are now on US 60 heading west from Neosho. Car's doing well. I need to uh, increase my idle just a little bit for uh, those times where I am stopping. Other than that, I'm happy. Just crossed into Oklahoma and oh yep there it is there's the casino All right, talk to me about where we are. Hey, we are standing on a piece of the original Ribbon Road. If you look right here, there's the edge of the curb. It was nine foot wide right over here. I don't know if you can see it. It's probably covered up. Uh, here, we'll see. You might be able to see it down here a little better. At any rate, this is the original Route 66 right here. Isn't Hell yeah. crazy? We've got our car sitting <laughs> Heck yeah. The notchback. And the Caprice Classic. The 89 Caprice. Just killing it. Killing it. Ready so, to roll. So just, just for the video's sake, because it's interesting. It goes this way. Or mm -hmm. what's the other Inside, one? Inside, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah buddy. Dual function, baby. So yeah, so that's that's uh, it's modern that's modern engineering right there. That's right. Damn right. Yeah. Here's some folks going along. Got a thumbs up. <laughs> somebody happy today. <laughs> yeah. These yeah. cars just put smiles on people's faces, man. They do. Look at that, man. So here's what the hell that is. In 22, a nine-foot wide roadway was completed between Miami and Afton, Oklahoma. Well, we're getting pretty close here. When I checked the weather before coming, it acted like rain would be happening today and tomorrow. But then as I got closer to the day, it acted like no rain. And now, it's starting to get a little bit of rain. So we'll see what happens. The temperature dropped a fair bit. It's just absolutely gorgeous out. Really enjoying this drive. So this is Dragon On Grand in Ponca City, Oklahoma. Through my rain-soaked windshield. Cars cruise up Grand and back, sometimes parking to watch the cars go by and let people get a closer look at their cars. And as you can see, there are cars of all kinds. Oh, look at this T-Bird, man. Heck oh, yeah. my goodness. Heck yeah. I think that's a 61 or 2 Cadillac. Lots of cars.
camera keeps focusing on the raindrops here, I'll find a better solution in just a second. Now I find interest in nearly everything, which makes focusing a little challenging. One reason that this is such a great show is all these really cool old cars, but another one is these absolutely fantastic old buildings. It's a Type 3! It's a Volkswagen Type 3! Now I have to admit that this made my whole day. A young girl flagged me down to ask what is my car. Maybe she asked others about their cars too, but it's possible that she was especially taken by the notchback, even in its far less than perfect condition. I'm often surprised by how many women ask about this car, but rarely do young people ask, let alone a young girl. Hey, my own kids don't much care about this car, and my youngest is a car guy. Mach 1s in attendance, and while I never much cared for them as a kid, I've grown to really like them. Look at this old theater. How many of these kinds of places have been torn down all over the country? So cool to see this one restored and kept nice. No, your eyes aren't playing tricks on you. That's a squatty car there. And another Mach 1. I actually stopped to verify this one is a 68 Ford Mustang GT408, and yes, it does sound amazing. As you can tell, lots of people come out to enjoy the constant parade of cars. Seeing the little kids running around and playing and having a good time really adds something to the experience for me. I remember taking mine to the Phoenix Buggerama when they were just little. Later on, when this trailer dried off, kids came out and decorated it in chalk. At first, this was the only other V-dub there. Later, a buggy showed up, and there was also a 914 Porsche, which technically isn't a Volkswagen, but... Okay, how adorable is this? 
I was stopping whenever folks were ready to cross, but I was happy to stop for this little troop. After all that rain, here was a reminder that the sun had come out again. So as you already know, there are plenty of great cars here. Some hold a bit more personal attachment for me. The T-Bird was so iconic. I remember my dad telling me how memorable it was when he saw Suzanne Summers in American Graffiti driving a T-Bird. When I was in high school, I knew a girl who had one, pink nonetheless. One day my dad mentioned seeing a cute young blonde girl driving a pink T-Bird and I told him, I know that girl. This group of young men found themselves in the relentless pursuit of someone who would do a burnout. They were repeatedly disappointed, but many were happy to oblige by revving their engines. There's that GT again. After a while, we parked and had a walkabout. I find people can be fairly intensely divided about the allure of a rat rod, but this particular car, I feel, transcends that class. Oftentimes, a rat rod seeks a less expensive or involved alternative to some of the more expensive aspects of a restoration, such as paint. Big old chain links. Yeah. Look at those taillights too, man. In this case, I feel they may have very well put more effort into the paint than a lot of full restorations. I like the rest of the bear right here. Right? Pack well to the light display. <laughs> There's one on the other side yeah. too. Also, while there were many non-stock adornments, the selection and placement was thoroughly thought out, measured, balanced. I found this to be one of the more exceptional cars I've seen in some years. After the rain subsided, more cars continued to pour into the show. And so did this guy. I'm sure he had to rest his vocal cords after the show from all the people stopping to ask him about his entry. We never bothered to jockey for his time, but it's clear to see this thing is all custom. After just a little research, I decided this must be about a 1950s Chevrolet Deluxe Stylon. Now, I really enjoy a lot of cars from any time frame, but cars from this era appeal to me on a whole different level. I could have spent quite a long time inspecting this car inside and out, top to bottom. Aaron and I discussed the possibility that the rear window rolls down, but possibly by pivoting. 
but wasn't able to spend the time nor gain the proper access to determine. I even stopped and talked with this guy about his car, but didn't take any video because I was too busy talking. He has overcome similar cab challenges with the installation of sound deadening on the inside of the roof. There's also some rather nice upholstery. Hey, what are the snaps for? He'll answer next time he comes around. <laughs> and interestingly enough, he did. Next time he came around, he stopped and told the story about how the previous owner had these snaps put around the wheel wells, and he had these custom covers built to save gas while the car was parked all day or something. Similar, but it doesn't have big enough benders in the back. Yeah. town the next morning I found the home of this mobile mechanic truck. It seems to be a legitimate work truck for a shop. I absolutely dig that. Studebaker Gasser. guy I just talked to, he knows this dude. That's his daughter driving it. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen this before.
Because he got stuck to the top. You can see it. You can see bottom cap. Where have I seen this? I really feel like I've seen this somewhere before. Two of the best friends a guy can have, and we had a great time. Don't ask me what they were talking about while sitting watching cars go by. I won't tell you. Well, I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.